And with that, we arrive at uh, yet another week, another edition of the Kyle McCord Show. He's Kyle McCord, Orange QB. I'm Brian Higgins. Glad to have you uh, with us here. Again, uh, you guys know the rules here of the Kyle McCord Show. It's your show. Get in there. Ask questions uh, for the QB if you're in the chat on uh, Twitch at QSportsTalk.com. If you are with us on our QSportsTalk uh, YouTube page, got both in front of my face right now. So uh, get in the chat. Uh, let us know what's on your mind, and we'll just try to rattle through as much as we can here, Kyle. Over the course of the next half hour, and uh, man, we were just talking on the way in. Uh, t- tough one Saturday. What w- what was that game like? Because it, it felt like, you know, down, up, roller coaster. H- how'd you handle the emotions of that one Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I think like you said, uh, you got a little bit of everything. Um, you know, slow start and then bounce back and put some points on the board and then, um, you know, tried to, to finish strong. But, you know, I think they just made, you know, f- a few more plays than we did. Um and, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the reality of it. And, um, you know, especially in this conference and, you know, I feel like every single game is, is close and it comes down to the wire and, you know, you go back and you watch the film in those tight games and it's, you know, one play here, one play there. And, uh, you're looking at a completely different game. Uh, we've been on both sides of it this year where we've made those plays and then when we haven't, um, so, you know, I think it's obviously tough. Uh, tough to lose, um, you know, but, uh, you know, I think uh, another, you know, great opportunity this week. Yeah, I mean, Fran said it yesterday. I guess it was yesterday that he was talking about, hey, you look at two fourth downs, right? The the Stanford game in this game, and you guys are 8-1, and, and you say it the other way, right? Like, look, if LaQuinn Allen doesn't make that play at UNLV, that, that's a loss. That that feels like uh, it's fun to watch, I, I guess, but, man, that's got to be nerve-wracking when it's coming yeah. down to single plays like that. I mean, I, I think, you know, across, you know, college football this year, that's kind of been the case for a lot of games coming down to the wire. And then you look to the NFL, it's literally every single week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, the end of game, one or two plays that, you know, determine a win and a loss. And, and sometimes that's how thin the margin of error is. And, um, you know, I think when, you, you know, you're in a game like that, um, you know, it's, it's tough cause you feel like, you know, you play well enough to win. Uh, but obviously when, you know, that doesn't happen, um, you know, you just, you, you go back and you just try to find, you know, where did we, we go wrong? And, um, you know, it's not, not a good feeling. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. Like, you know, there's nothing good. I think that that comes out of a loss. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you learn from the film and you grow from it, but you know, it's, it's not fun losing. You know, it's been interesting to watch your head coach certainly go through this as well. Go figure. I mean, you have more games starting as a quarterback in college than he has at head coach. How have you noticed him kind of go through uh, this year? Because it, it's a learning process, right, of trying to figure all this stuff out. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he he stepped into the role, and I think there, there are high expectations for him. And I, I think, you know, as there should be, I think that, you know, he, he demands that out of himself. And so when other people, you know, demand high expectations out of him it, it doesn't phase him at all but uh just to, to see what he's done um in his first 10 11 months mm-hmm. as as head coach to completely kind of change the narrative on the program and um you know right the ship a little bit i mean I, I think he deserves a lot of credit and i don't know if if he's getting all the credit as he should um and then i think you know just to see some of the guys he he brought in obviously um you know and with this year on on short notice um you know kind of getting some late late high school players uh in that class and, and bringing them in and as well as the transfer portal i think you know says a lot and then you know i think he's going to continue this momentum and um you know I, I said to the guys after the game you know although losing you know it's it's rough um you know and it's not fun like but you know the group that we have right now could be the group, if we finish the season the way we should, should be the group that changes Syracuse football. And I know a lot of guys want, want to win for Coach Fran, and I do too. Um, but, you know, I think he's handled it well. It's, you know, not easy coming into to that role and being a first-time head coach and having to deal with all that. But I think he, he's handled it very well. Um, and I think, you know, he's, he's going to be around for a while and he's going to he's going to win a lot. It felt to me, Kyle, like the goals of this season were almost like dual paths. Like you coming from Ohio State, Fram coming from Georgia. Fran said it yesterday. It's like, man, like I, I am learning from losses. We, we didn't lose. Yeah. <laughs> he went through two yeah. seasons. They basically they lost one football game during yeah. his uh, his time there as a head coach. Obviously, you guys didn't do it very often at Ohio State. And you talk about setting the foundation like both at Ohio State and, and Georgia. Like the foundation's not just set, like it's yeah. a, as sturdy as it can be. How, how different is that here? You you came in with the idea of, hey, we, we want to make a push, right, at, at winning these games and conference title and all that. 
but also it's important to build a, a foundation. How, how important is that to you guys where, you know, you'll be wherever in a year or two or three and you, you get to look back and say, hey, th- this is something that we helped start. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that goes way beyond the, the wins and losses and, um, you know, to, to be the group that started something special here, I think is, is going to be something that, you know, I'm going to forever cherish. And I think that's why the, these last few games are so important mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, I feel like if we can go out and, and win some of these games and, you know, ultimately have, you know, a few, uh, not even a few, I think there's a bunch of guys from this year's team that can go on this year and, and go to the, the NFL and get drafted, like just to, to see that and know what it's going to do for this program, I think is going to be, something that's really rewarding and you know no one wants to win more than I do um you know and I, I'm I'm super competitive and every single time we lose you know I don't want to talk to anybody like you know I I just want to win but um you know knowing that uh I was part of the group that you know helped change the narrative around Syracuse football and you know helped springboard them um into becoming uh, what they once were, obviously, years ago, um, is, is something that is, is going to be super special for me. All right, let's get start getting it. Devin brings up a, an important question in the chat, and Fran said this yesterday in his press conference. I don't know if you heard this, uh, Kyle. He, he said that after losses, he, he doesn't think he deserves, like, a shower. Like, he, he didn't soap up until, like, yesterday morning. I, I, I assume you showered at some point after the game. Yeah. Did Fran stink? I'm sure you've met with him at some point. What, what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think some people thought he was joking, but... I no, think, no, I, be- yeah. I believed him 100%. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's <laughs> he's a competitor. And, um, you know, I think, you know, when we don't win, it's just, you know, like all, all he can think about is just going back and, like, watching the film and just replaying it, like, what he could have done differently. Mm-hmm. And... I think he takes he takes a lot of the um a lot of the blame and you know I think that that's rare I mean for you know a, a first year head coach it's, it would be so easy for him to to point fingers and um you know kind of dismiss it but he he takes it on the chin um and he's not even the one playing mm-hmm. and so um you know I I think that having a coach like that um you know it, it like we see it we see you know the losses wearing him so we want to win for for coach Fram um, but you know, he's a competitor and, and, you know, I think that obviously that, that comment kind of blew up a little bit, but you know, it's, it's the truth, but I showered. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle showered. I Thank showered you. You were playing. You yeah. were hopefully a little sweatier than yeah. uh, he was on, uh, on center. He did say, and I mean, Hey, you, you meet with him personally a lot. So I, I'm sure you appreciate that. He said he still keeps like the toothbrushing and stuff Yeah, going. So you're not getting like the yeah. drag, dragon breath on yeah. you. And no, that I think. I think we appreciate that everybody in the facility. Uh, yeah, you don't, uh, you know, I, it's one that's, you know, take take it to a point here. But uh, we're, we're we're living in a society here. Like, let, yeah. let, let's keep everybody all right. All right, what else we got in the, here in the chat? Roddy Richards wants to know, uh, what are your routines uh, with the, the time change this week? So you did UNLV. Yeah. That was a night game. This will be a noon Pacific game. Mm-hmm. Same plan, different plan. What, what's the plan this week? Similar plan. Um, anytime you get on the West Coast, um you know, most teams, I know we do, we travel a day early, so we'll get out there uh, Thursday. That's what we did for UNLV. We played them on uh, Friday, and so we got out there on Wednesday, practiced right away, kind of got adjusted to everything, and then you're out there for a full day. And, um, you know, I think a, a noon game there, so really we're playing at, you know, three hour time is easier than what we did at UNLV because UNLV, when we went into overtime, it was like – Past midnight, here, right? I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, uh, it was bad. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was closing on one real quick. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think you know the coaches do a good job of, of getting us ready. Um, you know, I know they all they got the travel and all that planned, and so now um, you know it kind of makes it easy for us just to get out there and, and focus on football and, and meetings and all that. Uh, yeah, so you guys, uh, today's Tuesday. You guys will be flying out Thursday, doing all that, then have a full day uh, out there on uh, Friday, and then the uh, game at uh, noon. You're obviously used to the noon, so that part of the routine, even though you're yeah. you know, out west, has got to be pretty normal, right, to get yeah. up and get at them on Saturday. Yeah, no, definitely used to all the big noon games from last year, <laughs> uh, um, and then uh, playing at noon a bunch this year. So that's it's an underrated time. You know, you can get up, get after it, and then you can watch some of the night games too. The Penn State fans were a little annoyed about that a couple weeks ago, huh? I, I think all the Big Ten fans are. <laughs> <they're> all, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, Is it weird? Because like, I, I get that there's going to be noon games, right? Like There have to be games all day long. Is it weird when like the biggest game of the day is, is the nooner? I don't. I think 
for a, a big game, like a top 10 matchup like that, I don't know. I, I think it should be it should be at night, um, especially Penn State. I mean, like a, a Penn State whiteout at night, you know, a top 10 matchup, I think that's that's hard to beat in, like, the, the atmosphere uh, category. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they – Every big game, I feel like, in the Big Ten is at noon, so yeah. it is what it is. You're getting that noon uh, Fox spot, and, uh, yeah. you know, TV ratings, uh, as we know, Kyle, they speak very loudly, and uh, people are watching. I, I yeah. know that, but, yeah, it's kind of weird when that uh, that is going off at noon. All right, what yeah. else do we got here in the chat? Dom in North Carolina wants to know uh, this. His nephew is a high school freshman right now, and he plays fullback and middle linebacker and uh, aspires to be like he wants to play D1 uh, college football. What? Do kids at that age need to do to get noticed when you look at camp scenes, highlight tapes, whatever? What, what do you got to do when you're 14, 15? Yeah, um, I think, you know, camps are important. Um, I, I think that's where you kind of start to build those relationships with the coaches. But I think the biggest thing, you know, that they'll, they'll watch is the film. Um, and I think with social media nowadays, especially for young kids, so easy to get caught up in the rankings and, you know, who's getting offers from where and, you know, how many stars am I on, you know, whatever recruiting website. Um, but I think the most important thing is the work and, you know, making sure that you're getting bigger, stronger, faster, studying the game, um, and then just putting, you know, good things on film. And, and I think, obviously, like I said, you, you build those kind of personal relationships and in, in camps with, you know, the coaches. But ultimately, you know, when they go to recruit you, they're going to turn on the film. And, you know, I know Syracuse has, like, four or five, six guys that all work in recruiting. So if you're good enough, they'll find you for sure. Um, but, you know, I think the most important thing is not getting caught up in all, like, the social media stuff and just, you know, worrying about the, the work, the stuff that matters. How important are those camps, you know, like those June camps, get, getting invited or, or going to those or, you know, getting on that scene? Yeah, um, they are. They definitely are. I mean, some of them um, are, like, the, the college camps, I think, are good, you know, getting in front of, you know, coaches who obviously, you know, their opinions matter um, and making a good first impression on them. And then, uh, you know, some of those like Nike regional camps, they're cool to do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think that the college camps are, are the most important, um, you know, just allowing the coaches to see, you know, for me, like, you know, how I threw the ball, how I moved, how I, you know, just handle myself, how I talk, all that. Um, I think, uh, you know, that's, that's important. Um, and I, I think that, it's an underrated part of the recruiting process um, is just how you interact with the coaches. And I guess too, right? Like I, I, you were at the, you know, upper echelon of the recruiting process. You're going to the elite camps and whatever. Obviously there's, there's all these different levels of, of camps. How have you noticed? And I imagine you as a player can tell when, you know, sometimes coaches are there. Yeah, they're running the camp, but they're really only paying attention to one guy, right? Yeah. Or, or how often are coaches really grinding with the yeah. the the other kids to, to give them a chance to pop? I mean, I, I've been at camps where, like they uh they give you like different colored jerseys and it's like the coaches are only watching one <laughs> one group of those kids um i can tell you coach fran does not do that i've been to a few of the camps he has here and he's running from drill to drill yelling at the kids like <laughs> he yeah he, he has no filter um but uh yeah i mean it it, it definitely uh, some of those camps that i've been at um like you can tell like the coaches are only watching a handful of kids and uh you know, it is what it is. I mean, college, college recruiting, like, you know, like you got to get it how you get it. Um, but uh, I, I do think th those camps are important. Yeah, it's a wild world out there uh, yeah. with that stuff. But, yeah, no, I've heard stories of Fran and his game. He, he, is, he is out there. He, yeah. is, he is coaching it up. All right, uh, what, uh, what else do we have uh, here? Uh, Roddy, Roddy wants to know this. Uh, how often are you texting with your guy Marvin Harrison? He, he scored a touchdown this weekend, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, he got a touchdown. I talked to him yesterday. Um, I sent him a uh, – it was like a old video that, that popped up on my phone. We were in, we we're in a meeting, um, and we we're in a meeting. It was on Zoom. It was my senior year of high school uh, during COVID, and so we had to do everything kind of like virtual. It was like you come, you practice together, you play, and then you have to go do everything virtual. So all the meetings we did were virtual, and mm -hmm. uh, I knew I was gonna get ripped in film, so I set my phone up and I, I recorded what the coach had to say, <laughs> and. It was like a RPO, and Marvin was getting double teamed. And I think I just threw him like a fade, and it ended up getting picked off. And I sent it to him. The coach was ripping both of us, um, but it was funny. But I mean, he's killing it. He's killing it now, and I think you know he's starting to hit his stride. Um, he's doing well. They're gonna make the playoffs, aren't they? I mean, they're in, they they're, are. Least they're in good position right now. Are they leading the division? I think they might. Yeah, be. I think they're six and four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there we go. 
Kyler Murray, that's a different uh, that's a different kind of player, right? Like the yeah. way he, he plays. Yeah. That's not one you can really model your game after, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean. His legs look like he's in fast forward all the time. I don't know how he sees over the line sometimes. Like, that's impressive. I mean, watching him play, I mean, I'm, I'm 6'3", and sometimes, you know, you lose guys mm-hmm. behind the line. But being, you know, 5'10", whatever he is, I mean, he, he's really good from the pocket. Uh, obviously good from outside the pocket. Um, he's having a good year, too. All right, get your questions in the chat. Got eyes on both our uh, Twitch stream and uh, YouTube uh, stream at Q Sports Talk to uh, get our questions to Kyle. We got him till uh, roundabouts uh, eleven thirty today. Getting you ready for Q's and Cal uh, this upcoming uh, weekend. Um, Devin wants to know this: Have you ever met Pat McAfee? We'll see there. Did you have a game day game last year somewhere? You might have crossed paths with him. Yeah, I, th- I feel you'd remember if you yeah, met Pat McAfee. I mean, he he was definitely there. I don't think I met him though. I don't think I've ever met him. Um, but no, yeah, no, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. I've met him once and uh, my goodness. Yeah. It's all real. Yeah. <laughs> he he is that insane. He is, yeah. he is totally nuts. When you, when you see a guy like that though, I mean, you know, you, you've watched football for a long time. You watch these shows, you like the energy and youth, whatever you want to say to him. What, what do you think that's doing for the current attention being given to college football and all the zany yeah. stuff he's out there doing? I mean, I think he's doing a great job. I mean, game day, uh, you know, obviously that that kind of crew has been together forever, but yeah. to, to add him, I think he, he's it's done like a, a great shot job. Shot in the arm for it, right? Yeah, he, he brought a lot of life to that to that crew, um, and uh, he's fun to watch. He's fun to watch. He has no filter, none, um, which I think people appreciate. Um, and I, I think like watching his his uh, his show, like you never know, you know, what path he's going to go down. Whether he's going to talk about sports or like some something out of left field. Um, but I, th- I think he's probably the one of the best, if not the best, um, you know, media, sports media personalities out there right now. Yeah, I, I don't think I've told you this before, Kyle. I know I've told the chat at, at some point. So this was, uh, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Uh, there was one year Pat was doing the Thursday night games on ESPN. He was like their third guy in the booth. We get him on the pregame shows, me and Adam Terry. So, you know, Adam, he's six eight with a beard. Yeah. Like, he's not the, a subtle human being. He's the largest man on the planet. So we get... Pat on the show, but he he walked in like we'd already started the segment, so we didn't have a chance to chit chat before. They were teammates for a year on the Colts, so like they should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pat did not realize who he was talking to for like eight minutes. He, you look familiar. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no crap, I look yeah, familiar. Yeah. Like, what the heck? Yeah, that that's uh that's Pat though. He's, yeah, he's a crazy, crazy dude. Yeah. All right, what do we got? Uh, what do we got in the chat? Uh, what do we got going here? Uh, Global Pioneer just says uh, we appreciate all you guys have given to this point yeah. uh, this year. I, I feel that's been a pretty common sentiment, right? This year with the Q's yeah. fans for you guys, huh? Yeah, I mean, we we definitely feel the support. Um, you know, I just feel like the the energy is is definitely um, picked up, and um, you know, I think we we still got you know more to give. Obviously, a big game this week going on the road, um, and then finishing the year out strong with, with two games. Uh, in the dome, so you know I'm excited. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, wish you know we had you know one or one or two of those games back, and um, you know we're you know eight and one, but um, you know it's it's football, but you know we, we definitely appreciate all the the support and the love. Uh, you know, we felt it all year long. Right, break this league down for me. What what's going on here? I mean, Miami uh, absorbs a loss last week. I mean, heck, that that Georgia Tech team. You know how dangerous they can be. Uh, you guys got them early in the season. SMU's the only undefeated team left. I don't know if you got to watch them much. Clemson lost a few weeks ago. Do you do you have any idea what's going on yeah. in this league right now? No, I mean it's it's crazy. I mean the thing is, there's a lot of good teams. Like yeah, from top down, I think every single team is is capable of beating each other. Um, and I mean you have to bring it every single week and. Um, you know, obviously the the teams at the top have been playing well, but then you know you see you know like you say Clemson losing and then you know Miami uh, losing, and you know there's just a lot of good teams, a lot of good talent uh, across the board. Uh, but that's what you want. That's what you want. But I mean, it is crazy. You know, seven. I think it's 17 teams, something like that. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of them all. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I mean somebody's gonna have probably one conference loss, maybe, and and not make the. Uh, not make the uh, championship or, you know, two losses and not even be in, in contention for the conference championship. It's crazy. 
Yeah, I mean, it's opened up a, a little with Clemson and Miami having lost, but then everybody else has lost, so it's, it's yeah. kind of hard to figure out. SMU is the only team that does not have a a, a league loss uh, right now, so they are, go figure, first year in the league, they got a chance to go win the whole thing and make the playoff here. It's yep. it's wide open. Uh, uh, and it, a good point here from Showbro Michael about the, the loss this last week. Uh You've lost three games uh, after the first two. You won the next week, so that that yeah. is a, a good sign. What, why do you think that is? That uh, you know, some teams you'll lose a game and it just falls. The wheels come off. Uh, yeah. You guys, it seems to be the opposite. Yeah, I, I think that um, you know we we get back and you know just hungry, ready to play. Want to you know right our wrongs, and um, you know I think it's always uh, it's always I think more. Uh, I don't know the word. I, I think more just mo- motivating, I guess, would be the right word to get back on the field after you lose, mm-hmm. um, knowing that you didn't put your best effort out there. And, um, you know, like I, I, I know that guys were excited to get back and, and practice yesterday and, um, you know, looking forward to, you know, going out west this week. And um, I think, yeah, I mean, both times we've lost this season, um, you know, I think we've regrouped and bounced back strong. So looking to do the same this week. All right. Uh, Cal this week. Have you been to California before? Have yeah, right. have just a uh, Rose Bowl. Were you in a Rose Bowl or yeah. you just uh, been out there? I've been out there a few times. Uh, my quarterback coach uh, is out there, so I go there a bunch. I okay. uh, went to the Rose Bowl. My uncle lives um, in San Francisco, um, so I've been out there a good amount. All right, so you, an uncle in San Fran. This is almost yeah. like a home game for you now. Yeah. You got a little. Uh, how, how much family you got out there? Just just your uncle. Just my uncle, uh, but my dad's gonna go out there and and stay with him, and uh, think maybe other family members i'm not sure uh not a huge crowd like the virginia tech game i think i had like 60 70 people or something that came to that game mm. um but i think cal would be like six or seven yeah well that's pretty good for being literally on the other side of yeah. the country that's yeah. still pretty good uh it's probably going to be uh close to the tops of the team i'd imagine we're pretty yeah. far away from sir I'm, I'm losing track there's there's a few cali cal guys on the team are there any cal guys on the team right now yeah there's a handful there's this, a handful. I'm trying to remember. Is this uh, Bar- Barry Buxton? Is Barry Buxton from California. I'm trying to remember uh, who else we got. Deion Wilson. No tank, right? Tank. Yeah. yeah, he's from California. Um, a few other guys. Yeah, we got some Cali guys. Okay. There's a decent... Uh, I'll be intrigued to see what kind of Syracuse fan base there is out there because... You know, L.A., San Fran. There's a decent alumni contingent yeah. out there, so I'll be I'll be intrigued to see how that how that uh, kind of stacks up uh, this week. Uh, what have you seen on the, this Cal team on on film? I mean, you you look at a team they they forced a ton of turnovers so yeah. far this year for sure. I imagine uh, as a quarterback, that's got to pop out to you immediately. Yeah, no, they uh, they think they or I know they have the the leading um, interception uh, cornerback and. In FBS right now, I think he has like seven picks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they got uh, D. Lyman, who I think is top ten in, in sacks. Um, and they're a good team. They're a veteran group um, from you know top down. They got a lot of experience, um, a lot of talent too. Uh, you know, I think their head coach has been there for seven or eight years. So you know, not a new system for them. All the guys have been in that system uh, since they've been there. So. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to have our hands full and, uh, they've lost in four games all by one possession. So, uh, we're going to, we're going to have to come ready to play. And then on top of that, you know, they just, uh, put up a whole bunch of points against, um, Wake Forest too. So both sides of the ball are going to have to come, uh, with their best stuff. Yeah, I think it's their four league losses are by nine total points, something yeah, crazy like that, crazy. including you know late short missed field goals and turnovers and all sorts yeah. of crazy things late, uh, late in games. You mentioned, you know, the, their corner that has all the interceptions. Like, you've dealt with the last few weeks, like, a, a D lineman that has a lot of sacks. Like, you, you kind of know the deal with that. Like, all right, let's make sure we have somebody over to block and well, whatever. When there's a corner like that, is that a stay away? Is that a be careful? Is that a just do do your normal business? How do you handle a guy like that? I mean, he doesn't he doesn't have all those interceptions by accident. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, you definitely have to – to watch film um, and and know his his strengths and you know how he plays and uh, what he does to cause those turnovers and um, you know I think obviously you know you don't ever want to play play scared um, but you know you, you want to make good decisions with the ball and and make sure that you're not putting it out in, in harm's way um, and so you know I think you know our receivers uh, they they faced a lot of good DBs this year and I think it's going to be you know more of the same mm-hmm. uh, this week facing another good secondary and experienced secondary too I think you know they're they're starting four guys are all seniors um, so like I said I mean we're we're going to have to do a good job of you know with our, our scheme 
um, you know, being crisp in, in the pass uh, protection and in the routes and making sure that, you know, we're we're focusing on the attention to detail. Here's one from VP in our uh, YouTube chat. Says, thanks for a fun season and wants to know any early insight into NFL prep. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been trying to, you know, not think about all that too much. Just been focusing on this season. Um, but, you know, I'll probably uh, just go work with uh, my quarterback coach. Um, you know, I know it's going to be uh, a long, long process um, with, you know, training and, you know, getting ready and, you know, all the different stuff, the combine and all that. But uh, I'll figure that out when I get there. I'm, you know, just been locked in on, on the season so far. Um, and, you know, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. Is that different for quarterbacks than other guys too? Like, I mean, you know, other positions they're working on their 40. Like, you're not you're not getting drafted on your 40 time, right? Like, that's not, yeah. that's not what's going into the evaluation of a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, you know, I've never gone through the the process, but just talking to, uh, you know, some of the guys that I know in the, the NFL right now and about, you know, what they went through with their process. And I think it, you know, it's unique to, to each guy, kind of what they do. Um, you know, obviously a lot of fundamentals and, um, you know, training on, you know, just, you know, cutting like the little, bad out of your game mm -hmm. um and then on top of that i think you know it's a lot of mental stuff too um going back and you know watching your film and being able to break down um you know each play and the offense and the read and uh, everything that goes into that and then you know knowing um you know nfl terminology for defenses and offenses and stuff like that so um yeah it's a lot that goes into it and quarterback is definitely a unique process than all the other ones because um you know obviously physically they just want to see how you move and, and throw the ball but a lot of it is mental how you handle yourself stuff like that uh yeah Haley, you always see if there's going to be any clips it's going to be all oh, the, the qb's on the board right they're, they're yeah. getting on the board is that something you enjoy doing at this level getting up and <laughs> you know drawing up yeah. some ball plays and, and going through that stuff yeah i mean i've i've been doing that for for a while now um and uh i still remember like my first time i was in like eighth grade and i'm visited uh my high school that i went to and my head coach put me up on the board and i was like oh my gosh you know i'm like stressing <laughs> out um but yeah you definitely get more comfortable with it um as time goes on and uh now i feel like you know you're in i'm in a good spot and you know i can break down uh you know defenses and, and what i see and, uh, and i'm just able to like verbalize um you know that that type of stuff yeah coaches love that right they, they love having those shorthanded conversations with quarterbacks right yeah uh and they they i know they they try to kind of uh they try to test you too yeah um you know see if uh see if you'll fold and you know say something that you shouldn't um so you know it's a little bit like walking on on eggshells but uh yeah it's fun yeah i think back to the the giants hard knocks this off season when dayball had all the guys up there and like mm -hmm. i'm like oh he really likes this Jaden daniels i hope they hope yeah. the giant oh he's on he's on their rival that's no good yeah. like the, the guy yeah. that clearly gets it is not uh, not on their team yeah uh, uh the, the chat is now all wants to play you in madden next year uh, devin wants to he's gonna pick whatever team vp yeah so you've just made the college video game. Yeah. They're planning ahead. Yeah. There you there go. You go. There you go. You can. Uh, you've got. You've got people in your corner here, uh, already on that. All right. Uh, last thing here as uh, we wrap up uh, uh, this week. W what's it going to take this week? I mean, it just feels like yeah. right. Like fast forward to the fourth quarter in a one possession game right now while we're yeah. at it. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be another four quarter game. Um, and uh, I said it in the beginning of the year um, in one of our team meetings, and you know, I told him I was like, I don't, I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know what game it's going to be, but you know, uh, you know our, our season and a lot of the games are going to come down to one play, and you know, you have to be able to, you know, step up and make that play. And you know, I'm sure at some point in, in this week's game, it's going to be a big situation, game on the line. I don't know if the offense is going to be on the field or the defense is going to be on the field, and somebody's going to have to step up and make a play. Um, and you know, obviously Cal, they've been in every single game they've played and, you know, I think, uh, it's going to be another good test for us. And so, um, you know, when that opportunity comes, whenever it is, uh, you know, I think we're just gonna have to step up and, and make the play. All right. Well, Fran said yesterday, there's been a fourth and one, a fourth and nine. It's like, maybe it'll be a fourth and five. So we'll keep an yeah. eye out. We'll see yeah. if he's seen it to the future. All right. There's our guy, Kyle McCord. Catch him a noon Pacific Saturday. It's three here in the queues for uh, Syracuse uh, and uh, Cal. All of our normal coverage coming on uh, Saturday. Of course, we'll detail as the week goes. we got a football, basketball uh, doubleheader uh, going on Saturday with uh, hoops going at one in the Dome. And then uh, Kyle will be back here uh, next week, 11 o'clock on Tuesday to get more of your questions then. So for Kyle, I'm Brian. Go Orange.